What are you doing there, Jeff? <laughs> Holding a big piece of wood, something I don't know what I'm doing. So what we're doing is because we've been avoiding this for quite some time now, but we got to separate the horses because Sassy's having hoof problems and so they don't go crazy, we're creating stalls here in the barn for them. So this is partition one of two that we're putting up so that we can have those two separated from each other. And Jeff was kind enough to come out and help us out. Who are you, Jeff? Uh, okay. I am a friend, I'm a sponsor. Uh, I'm a believer in what you guys do both in this off-grid-ish and in your free speech endeavors. When you say sponsor, you don't mean AA. No, not AA. Well, Somebody who believes in what you're doing is willing to put my money where my mouth his is. His idea of alcohol sponsorship is to bring us not only that we have high altitude coffee and wine, now he brought us some high altitude beer. My brother lives in um, Pinedale, Wyoming, which is where that beer is from. And I have, I'm on my way back to Seattle after visiting uh, my mom and my brother uh, for the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, I wanted to drop off this beer. You asked if I could uh, give you a hand with this little project, and I said, sure. Why not? I like helping. All right, so in order to build this masterpiece, this modern marvel of engineering that we're doing for these stalls, uh, the total materials that I had to get was basically, I got about a, a hundred lag screws. I got 15 two by six by 12s and two livestock 12 foot gates. Um, and that, that's pretty much it. And the tools I'm using is, I got a circular saw, a couple saw horses, a level, squares, tape measure, drill bits. Total cost? Total cost we're looking at is probably close to $600. Great coffee, thanks for sharing. Go to TwinEngineCoffee.com. What, coffee, what coffee is that that you have there, Jeff? I think it's uh, Twin Engine Coffee. Twin Elite. Engine Coffee? Twin Where engine can coffee. I get Twin Engine Coffee from? Uh, they have a website, twin, twin, TwinEngineCoffee.com, and I think there's a, a slash and a promo <laughs> that you can <laughs> only use. only we knew what that was, maybe that could appear below. Right here? Right here. Right here. Hmm. hmm. It's good coffee, though. It looks good. It, it's... <laughs> Not just saying that. It's good coffee. I don't know if it's the coffee that looks good or the guy drinking it. It's the beard. Ah, uh, yeah. So the basic idea for the stalls is this is one stall. That'll be the other stall. So once we finish up putting the divider on this one, we're going to put another divider here. And we set both gates up so that either A, they can be closed and they open from the same point, or B, you can have them like this. And so you still have essentially two stalls, but it, it's it's left open and they're out of the way. So you can muck the stall and do whatever you need to do. And then when you're ready for it to close, you just bring it right here, wrap your chain around and it's closed. So to give you an idea of kind of what we were dealing with before, we didn't have anything like that and it was open just like this. So it's hard to visualize right now because there's actually stuff here but this was all wide open. And because Sassy's having her problems, we were putting her in the main part there, but it was uh, because they're pack animals, uh, Megan was getting excited and upset about it, and, which was then in turn causing Sassy to get all excited upset, which is not good for her when we're trying to get her to mend up. So by giving them a smaller stall, they can be next to each other without freaking out, but they're not gonna be sitting there doing a whole bunch of running around and going crazy. So I just Googled like, what's the normal uh, stall size for a horse? And it came out with 12 by 12. And incidentally, these posts are 12 by 12 on square. So it worked out for us, which was my big concern. I, did, I knew we didn't have a whole lot of money i didn't have a whole lot of time because i'm going to work tomorrow and flying uh to go do some training before christmas and uh you know i needed to be able to get it done which is why we're so thankful to have folks like jeff who are going to come out and you know help us out and get us through some of these things because 
you're not seeing the woman behind the camera all the work that goes into her doing these different channels but on top of that she's a full-time mom and then i travel for work so she does a lot of stuff on her own so her having the ability to still do the video people come out and help us out and we get to meet the people that support us which we're so thankful for uh it's all win-win how did we cross paths it was your viral video that i first saw the one that they uh shadow banned uh i live in the greater seattle area and what you were talking about uh, rang home for me because i'd been around it i'd seen it and I said, I'd get to know these people, and I messaged you. You messaged me back, quite to my surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're here checking us out right now, uh, you'll know this is our off-gridish channel that we do little home projects and things that we're trying to up our skill level as we head towards the kind of lifestyle that we want to have. Uh, if you're not aware of it though, Ali has another channel that's where she does all of her media analysis, current events, topics, things like that. But she looks at it from the mindset of not so much as what's going on in the news, but how is the news actually covering the facts of the real topics. So it's kind of an interesting perspective. If you haven't seen it so far, you should go check it out and make sure you hit the like and subscribe button below. Oh, oh. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Come on, Meg. I don't want to die, so. There you go. Go get it. Okay.